Hey, it's Chris with the Beer Temple, and I've got our March Beer Club selections here, and I want to take you through what we've picked out for you this month. We've got five beers. We've got two California IPAs. We've got a Texas Goza, unfruited, which you don't see that often anymore. We've got a classic Porter, and we have a really nice lager with a little bit of a hop character from Forest and Maine, small brewery out of Pennsylvania. So let's get right into it. All right, so the first beer I've got is a new pale ale from Firestone and Walker, and it is their XPA. X means extra pale ale. Essentially, this is a rebranded American pale ale, but anytime Firestone Walker comes out with a new hoppy product, or for that matter, basically a new product, I am always interested. Their head brewer, Matt Brindelson, is one of the top brewers in the entire world is an absolute master when it comes to hops. This beer uses Southern Hemisphere hops, so think like New Zealand and Australia hops. Um, so you're going to be getting some of those like kind of Nelson Sauvin, uh, Motueka. I'm not saying those are literally the, the hops that are in here, but it, it's going to have a really nice kind of tropical uh, sometimes you get like almost like a grape-like quality from some of these beers. Um, pour it into our tulip glass. This comes in at I think, yeah, just 5%. This is one of my favorite new pale ales to come out in recent memory. You can see certainly not a hazy. This is brilliantly clear, um, beautiful looking beer. And the beer just kind of the, is all about the hops. It, it, it's a very light bodied beer. Um, it isn't, it's also fairly low in alcohol and it's about just this really wonderful combination of hops. Mm. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with what some of these New World hops taste like, I'm sorry, um, not just New World, but New Zealand, Australia hops, um, this would be a good kind of 101 class on what some of these hops taste like. Um, a really nice, almost like melony quality to it. A little bit of bitterness just to kind of keep the beer crisp, but just very, very drinkable. Um, I've had a, a couple instances where we've had a few IPAs that we're going through, and the sign of a good beer is if it just keeps kind of, your glass keeps emptying. and this XPA has been the king of that. Just a really, really nice, well-rounded, hop-forward pale ale. Really excited. I hope this sticks around. If this becomes an all-year beer, all-year-round beer, this will be a staple for me. Very excited about this one. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Let's keep it rolling with another IPA or another pale ale. This is a full-blown IPA, a true West Coast IPA from one of my favorite breweries and certainly one of the best brewers of the West Coast IPA. This is, we, we say, this is in a West Coast style IPA. This is a West Coast IPA from Beachwood uh, in Long Beach, California, just north of San Diego, and they've definitely got that San Diego style West Coast IPA. So even when you're talking about West Coast, to me there is almost a subdivision of West Coast IPA, and that is this San Diego style IPA. Beachwood very much in that. Um, and th that is where it's going to be very dry, very light, all about the hops. You can see again, not a hazy, not as brilliantly clear as the XBA, but certainly a clear beer. This is Citraholic, comes in at 7.1% alcohol. Pretty much all the Beachwood IPAs come in at 7.1%. And to me, the sweet spot for IPA is seven to seven and a half. Um, doesn't make it the most sessionable, but for whatever reason, it just time and again, the best IPAs, not double IPAs, not pale ales, IPAs come in at seven to seven and a half percent. It's just something about that strength that works really well for the style. Citraholic obviously is gonna rely a lot on the citra hops. Um, so you're gonna get a lot of uh, an orangey, citrusy, obviously, 
uh, aroma to it. You can get some mango as well, some peach. Mm. Really nice, a little bit fuller mouthfeel than that pale ale we just had. Still so drinkable, dry, has a nice kind of crisp, slow onset bitterness. So you're drinking it and it, it that, that sweet, while the, the flavors of these fruits make you think it's actually sweeter than it is, very dry beer. Um, one of our favorites, we get this about once or twice a year. Um, we're very lucky to get Beechwood. It's one of these breweries that, that we've contacted and helped bring into the market just because we like them so much. And, you know, a lot of places do West Coast IPA, but, you know, no surprise, the breweries on the West Coast do them the best. So awesome West Coast style IPA, the Citraholic from Beechwood. Mm. All right, we've got a porter now. Porters you don't see as much as you did maybe 15, 20 years ago, but still an excellent style of beer. I think people tend to think that they're these really heavy styles. They're not often. They're just a really nice roasty, uh, malt expressive beer. So when you have malt, you can have toasted malts. Think of like toasted breads, toasted nuts, stuff like that. And then you can have roasty flavors where you're getting a little bit more of that kind of uh, just maybe a little bit of a, a bite to it, a little bit more chocolatey uh, flavors to it. Um, Green Man makes a really, really fantastic porter. Um, it's sad, you know, these days it's harder to get just regular old multi-packs of porter, not barrel age, not imperial porters, just a solid porter. Uh, yeah, this one comes in at, at 6%. Asheville, North Carolina, a huge brewing hub, one of the biggest brewing hubs in the country. Um, so a lot of talented breweries and brewers out there. And um, yeah, just a, a solid beer. I've got to pour it into the half nonic. Why? I don't know. Just seemed, seemed right for me. Um, you can see very dark beer, but very clear as well. Around the edges, I see that kind of um, ruby hue, which is the actual color of this beer. Um, mm, a lot of almost like a, uh, uh, an ashy baker's chocolate aroma to it. Mm. It starts out with a little bit of a, of a full chocolate flavor. You start getting some of these coffee notes. You know, chocolate or cacao and coffee beans are roasted. You're going to get some of those same roasty flavors, some of those same um, flavors that are being created when you roast the, the chocolate or the coffee beans are the same things getting created when you're roasting the malt. So you're getting some of these same flavors. It's got a really soft, smooth mouthfeel, but then finishes dry. Um, this is not a sweet beer. It's got a little bit of a softer, fuller mouthfeel, um, kind of like a hazy does, but it's not nearly as, uh, I keep bringing up hazy, I don't know why, uh, but it's not nearly as sweet as many hazies are. Finishes very neutral, just dries out your mouth enough to have you come back for more. Um, I would love to have this beer with um, you know, a nice meal, nice fatty hamburger, something like that, some chili would go great. Next beer is the House Lager from Forest in Maine. They're from Ambler, Pennsylvania, just outside of Philadelphia. A brewery that I've been following and been a big fan of for a while. We helped bring them into Chicago. They specialize in, well, a, a, actually a lot of Belgian and a lot of classic English styles, but they also have this House Lager. And we brought some in. Uh, I had never had it before, and we were really impressed by it. Uh, they just make good beers from Forest in Maine. They don't get a lot of distribution, certainly not away from the uh, mid-Atlantic area. And um, we're really fortunate to have them here in Chicago. Don't know when we'll be getting them back again, hopefully sometime, but you know, it's just how it is. Poured it into uh, the Stange. Obviously it's a 16 ounce can, but I just kind of like the feel of these glasses, um, so I decided to pour it into it. Why? I don't know. This is a 4.8% lager. It's got a little bit more of a hop character than 
uh, like a, a Municellus would have. Uh, certainly not a hoppy beer. This is definitely a, a pale lager. We'll get it going like that. We're, oh, we've got a little bit of foam. I'll let that kind of die down. Um, when you're pouring a beer, if you want to get that really nice stable foam, what you want to do is pour a bunch of foam and let it come down, let it kind of compress, and then top it off, the kind of classic slow pour technique. Um, so I'll just let it sit here and we'll come back when it's ready. It'll probably take about a minute. All right, been a minute or two. You can see that foam has kind of compressed down. We'll top it off and then you get that nice kind of pillowy foam that kind of can push up above. Uh, you can keep going. You can let this compress and keep going and see how high you can get it, but you know, I think that's pretty, pretty nice foam there. You can get the little jiggle going for it. So yeah, if you want to do that, that slow pour, that's how you do it. House Lager, Forest in Maine. Mm, man, classic noble hop character. Is that literally the hops that they're using? I didn't even uh, look at, at what the hops they're using, but it's got that German classic noble hop flavor, which is very herbal, maybe slightly lemony. Um, very just bright green and, and very just lovely. Mm. So much more hop aroma than you would get in a classic German Hellas, certainly. Maybe a very fresh Pils is what you would uh, expect to get this much hop aroma in. Lovely, lovely smelling beer. Mm. Yeah, very clean light bready malt to it. You can see it's somewhat clear, but it looks unfiltered, you know, almost looks like uh, a Zwickel or something like that. Drinks very easy. The light pale malt and that herbal hop component just match up so well. Um, when I say clean, there's no off flavors. There's no yeast component that I can get. It's just bright, light uh, hops and bright light malt kind of playing together so nicely. You know, there's a reason that this style has taken over the world and it's for beers like this that are just so crushable and so enjoyable. Yum. All right, and last but not least, we've got a tart beer, sour beer, whatever you want to call it. This is the Salty Lady from Martin House Brewing. Uh, they are from Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, I believe. And um, did not know a lot about this brewery prior to trying this beer. Uh, this beer piqued our interest because it is a unfruited Goza. Goza kind of saw its uh, heyday maybe, uh, or revitalization maybe 10 years-ish ago. And you still see quite a bit of them. Anytime you see a margarita sour beer or something like that that's essentially a goza a goza is a german wheat ale that has a little bit of salt and oftentimes a little bit of coriander added to it uh, coriander is a very very common um, spice that is added to beer especially belgian beer very common in in belgian beer i'm sure a lot of the belgian beers that you've had have coriander in it and you didn't even know uh, but this is a uh, a goza, so it's going to be a little tart, a little salty, and we were really intrigued by this beer before we even had it because it wasn't fruited. In the last several years, every time there is a Berliner Weiss, another style of, of German sour wheat beer, or a goza, they throw fruit into it. And historically, fruit was added to these beers afterwards, at the time you would consume them to kind of offset or adjust the sourness. These beers could be varying levels of sour, and if you like yours a little less sour, you would add a little bit of a fruit syrup to them. So there is a, a history to fruiting these, but now almost all of them come kind of pre-fruited. So it was fun to see this uh, not having any fruit to it, and uh, we wanted to try it. We gave it a, a sip, and we really liked it. This one comes in again at just over 5%, 5.2, and you get a little bit of that kind of weedy aroma. I know that salty isn't a 
aroma, but I can almost smell that there's like a briny component to it and maybe a hint of that coriander. Very, very light. Um, mm. Lemony. It's like lemonade. This is like lemonade in a glass. And a lot of times, you know, if you add salt to a drink, it just makes it that much more quenching and that much more drinkable. So you might pick up that there's salt or you might not. It's just right there at the, at the threshold. Um, but it's definitely there and I think it really adds without being an overt component to the beer, which is to me, perfect. Yum, really nice. Um, so bright and lemony, um, would go really well with fish or salad, uh, could go well with cheeses, could even go up to like chicken or something like that. Um, this would again go really well with some food. Um, so yeah, that's the, the Salty Lady. Very happy to have this beer in from Texas. There you go. That is our beer club selections for March. Let me know what you guys thought and we'll see you for the April selections. If you're interested in signing up to our beer club, I'll put some information. I'm going like this, it won't be there. It'll be somewhere. Um, and thanks so much for watching.